painkillers are not good, right, doctor? Most of the time, you know, people say too much painkillers results in, uh, you know, ulcers, liver problem, kidney problem, heart problems. And, you know, there is a, a truth to that. Yeah, an excess amount of these medications can sometimes result in, can result in all these things. But on the other hand, uh, you know, uh, most of the time these medications are fairly well tolerated. They are good because they're cheap. They are non-immunosuppressive, meaning they don't weaken your immune system and thus do not reduce your defenses against infections. And they do control pain quite a fair bit. Okay, in fact. Because of the concern of the possible risk of, you know, heart attacks with painkillers, um, there are studies that were performed to see whether painkillers are associated with an increased risk of heart attacks. And so when we're looking at a group of painkillers, the collective group of NSAIDs, or rather the non-selective NSAIDs, things like diclofenac, uh, naproxen, Synflex, uh, there is actually no increase increased risk of, uh, you know, uh, heart attacks. In fact, one could argue that the hazard ratio or the risk appears to be fairly low and so may be lowered. And some arguments for this would be that if you reduce inflammation, then, uh, you know, the risk of developing atherosclerosis reduces. But of course, you know, we are also a bit cautious because when you look very closely, what we call the COXIPs or the COX inhibitors, things like acoxia, atrococcip, or celebrex, as it's also known, uh, does potentially increase the risk of heart attacks. So this group of medications may not necessarily be the, the, the NSAIDs that we would go for. Okay. And so when we assess biologics, always assess risks, benefits, and that's true for any medications, not just biologics. And so why is it that anti-TNFs are still the common place for first-line biologics in current practice? Well, any drug that has been around for, an old, uh, for a longer period of time um, is something that, okay, let, let's just say it as it is. Doctors are not very good risk takers, okay? In fact, quite kiasi most of the time. And so if we know that a medication works and we have more experience and more real life data and we know what to expect more with these medications, we tend to go for these medications. Of course, there's arguments for using newer medications. We don't always say old is good. Some newer medications are good as well. But I think because the NTTNFs have been around for quite some time, uh, they are more well-established there are more choices available. The prices have come down quite significantly. And there's the added advantage that anti-TNFs are uh, effective in the treatment of what we call the extra articular involvements of AS. So if there's inflammation of the eye or even of the intestines, TNFs will work quite well. Um, but of course, they are that potent. And so there is concern with regards to infections with tuberculosis or TB being one of the main concerns in an endemic region such as Singapore. Okay, so the anti-IL-17s are newer biologics. Uh, subcutaneous formulations are available. I am aware that there's IV formulations, but it's not available in my hospital. I'm not sure whether it's available in other hospitals at this moment. Um, there is a lower risk of tuberculosis infections with IL-17s. So for patients who have had TB before because of the risk of reactivation of patients who work in high risk areas where they are exposed to a lot of TB, we could consider anti-IL-17s instead of anti-TNFs. Um, but on the flip side, I think the infections that have been associated with IL-17s are actually fungal infections and that too has to be balanced out. 